Well, what's up everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to be diving into color grading within Premiere Pro, more specifically color grading at night when you are looking at buildings or stop signs or lights, anything. It's pretty incredible and I can't wait to show you what it's like, but if you enjoyed today's video, please click that like button. It takes a second and it seriously helps out the channel. This video is brought to you by Skillshare and I will be letting you know more about that later. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that little intro. If you did, smash that like button and let me know what you think down in the comments below. So these are the clips that we're working with and I love Premiere because you can always rearrange, wow. You can always rearrange your workspace and when I'm color grading, I like to have a large window so I can see what is going on. What's the best thing about this color grade? Well, basically we're going to only hang out in the curves tab. And now under the curves tab, we have a ton of options that we can play with here. And we're really gonna be only playing with this curves and the hue verse hue, but you can play around with everything else and get some interesting effects. So let's get started with something easy. So let's look at this last clip right here. Typically when I start this type of color grade, I will mess around with the initial curves slider. Now this is an RGB curve. The bottom portion represents your shadows and the upper portion represents your highlights. If you drag this up, the image gets brighter. If you drag it down, the image gets darker and so forth. So we also have red and same thing. You drag it down, it takes away the red. If you drag it up, it adds red in. Same thing for green and blue. You can already see where we're going with this, but where does this get interesting? Well, the Hover saturation slider controls the saturation of a selected color. So for example, these stoplights are red. So if I drag the red portion down, it will desaturate that. Now in order to just drag the red portion down, you'll notice that if you hover over this, it will create a plus sign. So you can create a plus sign anywhere and that will actually create a little keyframe that you can click and drag. Watch what happens if I drag this all the way down. You'll see that my stop light actually desaturates. Now it's kind of weird because it connects from this end to this end because it's a full color scale. But I don't really play around with the hue versus saturation. That's just to show you how it works. Where the magic is, is the hue versus hue. If you just drag this line up and down, you're already gonna get some interesting colors. And the TLDR is basically, if you drag this anywhere and then start manipulating your color curves up here, you're going to get something pretty cool, just like that. So what I wanna show you is how to selective color. So let's say that we wanna make this scene uh, purple and green. So for example, I need to select the reds to change my hue of these stoplights. So again, if you know what color the red is, you can make your own keyframes, but also you can click this eyedropper tool right here and then scroll over and click on the red in the stoplight and you'll instantly see that three keyframes were made. One here, one here, and one here. Now the middle keyframe is the point that it thinks that color is, basically. So if you drag this anywhere, up or down, you'll start to see that the color that you selected will change. For example, I want to change this to purple. So if you also look, there's a vertical line and you can see the color that we are dragging it to. So I'm gonna drag this up into the purple area that I get something that I like. Now you can adjust these lines and since it's purple, I'm gonna drag this right one out to the right a little bit till I get some purple in here. Now, what if I wanna make this green? Well, I'm gonna go back to my color picker. I know it's somewhere in here, and then I'm going to select up there. So that showed me that it's right around here. So if I click and drag this up to green, look what happens. My light up there is green, but this down here is purple. And again, we can adjust this accordingly, like so. And this is where the fun happens. Since all of this is vertical, we can basically click and adjust different parameters. So if we want that green light up 
top to be very bright. We know that the green was from the blue, so if I make two keyframes right here and drag up, watch what happens. That green light at the top becomes brighter. And you can do the same thing for the purple lights down here. I'm not really gonna adjust that. And now you can also play with the hue versus saturation. If you drag this all the way up, all of your colors will be overly saturated. But again, we just want to drag up our purples and that green at the top a little bit. Now from here, you can start to mess with the curves up top. I typically do the hue versus saturation first to get the colors I want, and now I control the entire image. So I can start by creating a simple S curve. I like to make a point here, drag that down a tiny bit, and then a point up here and drag that up. Now you can click a point in the middle and drag this anywhere accordingly. I think if I drag it up, it looks pretty good. And now let's go to the red. Now, if we drag our red down, we get a little more green hue. If we drag it up, we get more of a purple, which is kind of what I want. So I'm going to drag that up, and you can play around with just dragging the bottom portion up and see what it does, or you can just play around with just dragging the top portion up and seeing what it does. Since our image is predominantly really dark, as you can see by the Lumetri scope over here, we're going to just drag this up a little bit to boost those purples. And let's go to green. Now, if I drag the green down, we're going to remove some of that green hue, and it looks a little bit darker purple. Now, let's go to the blue and do the same. Drag this around. If we drag it down, we get rid of that green up there, but if we drag it up, we actually add that green back in. So, ultimately, this is what we created. Now, if you don't like the look of it or you, you think the purple is oversaturated, just drag that hue saturation curve down and also go back to your reds and decrease the amount of purple we have added in there for example if i drag this down i like the look of that a little bit better and now just like that in a couple of minutes we have created an awesome green and purple nightlife look because look at that that looks so good and the best thing is we can actually go to our effects controls right click on lumetri color and save this as a preset green and perp for purple and if we have other clips we can actually test this on that by going to our effects and going to presets and drag our green and purple effect on and just like that we have a custom preset if you guys want me to make a preset pack for free in the future smash that like button and i will make that happen so what if you want to learn more about color grading? Well, that brings me to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. I recently have been exploring more color grading videos and found value in this one from Dan Dan called Color Grading for Filmmaking. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Who knows, maybe I'll make a class on Skillshare you can check out. For a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership. At less than $10 a month, Skillshare is a no-brainer. And a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's show you a very quick example. Oh my, I cannot speak today. I'm gonna drag the hue Verse hue all the way down, and I'm gonna drag this down. I'm gonna go to the red curve and drag it up. And just like that, I have created a teal look. And let's make another one. Drag the hue versus hue here. Let's drag the red down, and you guessed it, we just created another look. And this is so powerful. Like I'm telling you, you can get very creative and just click around and drag these hue versus hue things all over the place and see what is happening to your image. It's a way to be a little bit more creative with your shot. So now that we had some fun playing around, let's get back to the actual video and show you a final example. Now, what do you do, Kyler, when there's not much color in your scene? Well, this is where the fun happens because we can actually bring out a lot of the image and we may even get into the hue versus luma slider. So for example, let's just start dragging the hue versus hue around and see what happens. So it looks like we have some color in the back right here and up front. Well, this is interesting because what if we make this back like really dark green and this front, um, 
maybe all green, honestly. So drag that up, and then we have to pick the color picker and select that image. And it's a red, it's something red. And now that's the interesting thing with the color picker, because if you select something that looks purple, the original image is actually orange-ish red. So keep that in mind if you think your color wheel is wrong. So I'm gonna drag this down to the green, and we already have something green. So what happens if I drag my hue saturation slider up? Well, not much. So let's play with the hue luma. Now if I drag this up, ooh, now we're starting to get somewhere. But I don't want to increase the brightness of this green back here. I wanna increase the brightness of this front scene. So I'm gonna select my color picker and select the ground right here. And you'll notice that it's selected these reds. So if I drag this up, like nothing's really happening. And this is where you have to start to manipulate your keyframes. So I'm gonna drag this out to the right a little bit and then maybe this one out to the left and then start to manipulate it. So if I drag it up, you'll see that my front scene starts to brighten up a little bit. So that looks good. And now let's drag our Hoover saturation slider up a little bit when we get to the greens back here. So let's select somewhere back here and it turns out it's actually blue. So let's drag this up and increase the width of that so we get a little bit more green hue in the back right here. And then let's also drag our curves down and let's create a point up top and drag that up to the top. So now we're getting a really moody scene where it's focusing on this green hue back here. And you guessed it, if we go to green and increase that green, it will create more green in our scene, but in this case, it's creating some yellow tones, which I don't really like. So let's play around with the blue and actually drag this up. And sometimes if we drag the blue up, it will actually create a better hue. So, I mean, we can look at this clip and I like it. Like, I like the look of that clip, and honestly, I don't think I want to change it. But this is where the fun happens. You can save this as a preset, keep it for later, and then continue to mess around with your image and see what happens. So, for example, playing around with the red and dragging it down actually makes our scene completely green. But I don't like that, so let's drag this up. Ooh, not good at all. So if you find a happy medium, then you can actually get a really cool scene. So if we go to the effects controls and untoggle our Lumetri color, you'll see that we actually didn't do too much. But what we did do is add some hue back here and kind of create a more, I don't know, artistic color grade with this technique. You can manipulate everything. You can create more points and drag this shit all over the place to get something that you actually want. The only thing I wish you could do with all of this stuff is actually set keyframes that change over time. Because when you go into the curves tab, you kind of just get this. And it's not really the best at keyframing. So hopefully in the future we could have the option to keyframe this over time to get some gradual change of effects. Premiere, Adobe, I know you're listening. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please let me know down in the comments below. Hit the like button so I can make you a custom nightlife preset pack, and send me stuff on Instagram on what you guys make. I'll see you next time.